The Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. Hi, Ethelbert. What are you reading? A uh, kind of information test in the paper. It says, what do these four names stand for? John L. Sullivan, John J. McGraw, Todd Sloan, Barney Oldfield. Uh, easy. Boxing, baseball, racing, auto racing. Say, you got them fast. That's yeah, a cinch. They're among the most famous names in their line. Everybody knows those names. Why, certainly, like everyone knows that Anchor Hawking is the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Ex-Convict. Morning, a highway leading from the city to its suburbs. At an intersection stands a hitchhiker dressed in new but strangely ill-fitting clothes. A battered-looking car slows down and has it does so. Hop in, bud. Thanks. Where are you heading for? Ardendale. Ah, oh, you're in luck. You're passing right through there. That's swell, mister. Casey's the name. Mine's cold. Where are you going in Ardendale? Huh? Brinsley Road. The Maddox Estates? How'd you know? I just guess. How long you been out? Out of the big house. Now look here, if you're oh, gonna no, be... wait a minute, don't get sore. You a cop? The sign on the windshield tells you my racket. Press. Mm-hmm. One of them wise guy reporters. <laughs> no. It's a dumb photographer. You remember my case? You took pictures of me when I was wrapped. Nope. Never saw you before. When a guy wearing a prison issue suit is heading for Asa Maddox, the next con can't get an honest job anywhere else. He's always sent to old man Maddox. What were you in for, bud? Armed robbery. First conviction? Yeah. Five years. I had it come to me, though. Oh, you feel that way about it? Yeah. And I'm not going to have it come to me again. What'd you say your name was, pal? Holden. Ben Holden. Well, who sent you to Maddox, Ben? Welfare Foundation? Yeah. I guess this Maddox is a pretty swell guy. You bet. Aces, from what I hear. I never met him, though. He's given a lot of ex-con... Uh, guys that have been in jams, fresh starts. Most of them are made good, some in a big way. At the foundation, they said a couple of rats had crossed in plenty. That's right. Been two cases during the past year. Guys he'd helped went out and pulled jobs while they were living on his estate. That's right. <laughs> nice character. Yeah, I think so, too. What do you know about it? You never come out of stir without a friend. Finally, to have a decent guy off your break. Anyone who rats on a decent guy like that should... should have his heart cut out. Oh, I'd say you meant that. Then I think Mr. Maddox is hiring a pretty good boy. Photography department, Casey speaking. City desk, Casey. Yeah, Burke, yeah. The report just came in of a payroll hold up at the Hannigan Mills. Huh? 30,000 bucks taken by a lone bandit. Hey, that's a nice haul. You want me to get out to the Hannigan Mills plant, of course? No, no, beat it down to headquarters. The paymaster, whose name is Whalen, has been taken down to headquarters to go over pictures in the criminal files. And if he makes an identification, I'll... <laughs> Casey, here's that uh, picture the paymaster identified. It's Ben Holden. But ben Holden? Discharged from Wallstick Prison a month ago. I put out his description, all radio cars and precinct stations. We'll soon pick him up. Ben Holden. Calling all cars, all precinct stations. Discontinue search for Hannigan Mills robber Ben Holden. Discontinue search for Ben Holden. He has just been identified as hit-and-run victim of unknown car. Ben Holden is dead. Hey, 
Hey, Joe, them guests at the end of the bar want three more bottles of beer. Now, uh, getting back to where we was, Casey. Yeah. Where'd they find this stick-up guy, Holden? On Beechnut Road, Edward. Yeah. A car had run over his chest and kept on going. Gee, this morning he lifts 30,000 bucks at the point of a gun, and this afternoon he's in the morgue. That's just the way she ought to be. I'm not so sure of it. Why? Well, Casey gave this Holden a lift in his car about three weeks ago and convinced himself that Holden was a reformed character. And that kid was on the level when he talked to me. I can't see him doing it. He's been positively identified. And the $100 bills found in his body had the serial numbers of bills noted by the bank that made up the payroll. But the total wad found on Holden's body amounted to less than 600 bucks, Annie. Now, what happened to the balance of that 30 grand? Well, he hid it somewhere, of course. He had plenty of time after the robbery case. Sure, there was time enough. Well? Annie. Two other ex-cons who got a break from Maddox have gone sour during the past year. And how? And if Maddox is smart, he'll give criminal reform up as a bad job. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Those two other ex-cons weren't captured alive either. Both of them were found dead, just like Ben Holden. Well, so what? One was shot by the cops when he tried to get away, and the other committed suicide when it looked like he was going to be captured. Very little of the dough that those guys stole was found on their bodies. Well, they... they... Sure. They'd hidden it somewhere, just like Holden. Yeah. It is a little funny. Say it is, so to speak, Casey. It's a, a peculiar coincidence. Yeah. Say, Annie, let's... Let's you and me go down to Homicide Bureau and have a talk with Logan. I got a hunch. Casey, I'm afraid I'm buying this hunch of yours. Well, that's something from you, Logan. You mean, Captain, that you don't think Ben Holden committed that payroll robbery either? On the evidence, he must have committed it, Miss Williams. I want to know why. I've looked up Holden's record. He was a model prisoner. The prison authorities were very favorably impressed with his good intentions when he was discharged. Now, what made him go sour? Yeah, that's what got me going, pal. You looked up the records of the other two guys who went sour after they got a break from Maddox? No, not yet. Have you? Uh-huh, yes. On paper, they seem pretty good Joes. Until after they got a job for Maddox. Now, Casey, you're not implying that A's a I'm Maddox. I'm merely implying there's been a three-time coincidence, Annie. But Mr. Maddox is... Well, he's a first citizen. He's helped hundreds of ex-convicts who've made good. Uh, the coincidence still remains, Miss Williams. Three of his protégés have gone bad. They were killed, and only a small <laughs> fraction of their hold-up loot was recovered. Now, maybe that's merely a coincidence, but... And I'm going to plant an undercover man in Maddox's place. Uh, one of your headquarters dicks? Uh, who else? Oh, Logan, wait a minute. He wouldn't get to first base. Outside of Maddox himself, every guy in that big estate is an ex-con. Those babies recognize cops like you do. Well, naturally detail a guy who is unknown to anyone there. They'll get wise to him. Of course, you have a better idea than mine. Sure. Let me be the undercover guy. You? Oh, that's it. Oh, Casey, you'd never get away with it either. Hey, Maddox doesn't know me. I've never run into any of his present staff of ex-cons. And I know a lot about the inside of prison. Remember, I once took a phony rap in order to get the goods on a certain guy. And in order to get an exclusive for your lousy paper. But, of course, you're not thinking of anything like that now. I certainly not. I offer my services purely and nobly in the cause of justice. Yeah, nuts. Of course, if, if I do get an exclusive, the Express gives me a raise for getting it. Well, look, you want to see me get along, don't you, pal? Yeah, but I'm not saying where to. Oh, come on. Break down, tough guy. Give me a go-ahead. Well, because of your talent for being lucky, compensates your shortage of intelligence. Okay. Thanks. And not only for your kind words. You're going to Maddox as, as an ex-convict, Casey? Why, sure. You'll have to appear as recently discharged from an out-of-state prison, one that none of the real ex-cons at Maddox's place have been in. Sure, we'll check up on their records. And we'll make a very thorough checkup. Also, when we pick your prison alma mater... He'll be well coached on what goes on there. Well, I learn quickly. Well, the only men Maddox helps are those sent to him with recommendations by the Welfare Foundation. Will they cooperate with you, Captain? One hundred percent, Miss Williams. And take only a short time to work the bugs out of our scheme. Then I'll start for Mr. Asa Maddox's place. <laughs> Good morning. I'd like to see Mr. Maddox. Who are you? Who are you? My name is Eagles, punk. Mr. Maddox Butler. Yeah? Thought all butlers had English accents. So you got your education from the movies. Tough guy, huh? 
No, at least not anymore. If you are punk, you come to the wrong joint. What's your name? Stacy. Huh? Dan Stacy. Foundation Center. Well, why didn't you say so right away? Come on in, Stacy. The boss is expecting you. Ah, thanks, Mr. Eggles. Plain Eggles. Eggles. Hey, just get out of there, Stillwater Pen, huh? Yeah. I'm a graduated Dan Amore. Hey, that's a real tough one, I guess. Yeah, it softened me up. That ain't happened to you. You don't belong here. No? No. Mr. Mannix is a grand guy. He's going to give you a job here. Oh, he's had some disappointments lately. Three of them. You show signs of being a disappointment, pal. You're going to wish you never left Stillwater. Well, that's the way it is, huh? That's the way it is. Not only with me, but there's a few other ex cons here who feel the same. Come on, Stacy. I'll take you into Mr. Maddox. You know, few of us wear the same clothes every day, and yet millions of families have breakfast, lunch, and dinner week after week, month after month from the same plates and dishes and platters. So why not make your meals more interesting and appetizing by changing your tableware? Now, you can now do it today at an almost ridiculously low price. Anchor Hawking has developed a brand new kind of dinnerware called jadeite, spelled J-A-D-E-I-T-E, jadeite. And jadeite's delicate jade green color harmonizes with any table decoration. But jadeite's beauty is the subject for two reasons. One, jadeite is heat-proof. Yes, as heat-proof as the Fire King oven glass you use for baking. And second, a complete 35-piece jadeite dinner service for six costs less than $5, including six cups, six saucers, six dessert plates, six salad plates, six dinner plates, a vegetable bowl, a platter, and a sugar and creamer set. Now, you'll also find jadeite in open stock at chain stores, department stores, hardware stores, and all other stores selling chinaware and glass. Jadeite is the newest triumph of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. Fair Foundation has recommended you very highly, Mr. Stacy. so I'm putting you to work here. Thanks, Mr. Maddox. Your job will be a small one at first, but you'll find every opportunity for advancement. I hope I can make good, sir. Oh, I'm sure you will. You know, there's well start I've made. I'm just out of prison. I might have been in prison had I not been lucky, Mr. Stacy. The difference between you and me has been only a matter of circumstance. That's the way you figure. Yes. Let's see. I made a pencil note of the employment I meant to give you. Uh, dear, I'm so absent-minded. What did I think of it? Uh, Shirley, Shirley. Yes, Mr. Maddox? What did I do with that note I made about... Oh, uh, please excuse me. Miss Reed, allow me to present Mr. Stacy. Reed? Mr. Stacy. Miss Reed is my private secretary. Also, she's the daughter of an old and very dear friend of mine. Uh, Shirley, where is Here that... Here it is, Mr. Maddox. Mr. Stacy is to work in the garage as assistant to Butch Franzen. Oh, yes, yes. Butch Franzen is my chief chauffeur, Mr. Stacy. Oh, uh, Shirley, will you take my new friend Stacy to my old friend Butch and introduce them? Gladly, Mr. Maddox. Will you come with me, Mr. Stacy? Gladly, Miss Reed. Maddox, it's been a privilege to meet you. Well, mine is the privilege, my boy. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Quite a guy. Yes, all of us here think so. You're from Stillwater, Mr. Stacy. Yeah, Minnesota. They treat you well out there? Not too bad. My father died in Joliet. Yeah? Mr. Maddox has only our kind around him. Hey, uh, you have <laughs> No, I've never been in prison. I didn't think so. Not with that face. You're pretty direct. Why not? <laughs> I haven't an answer to that one. You did your stretch for armed robbery. Yeah, that's right. Get much? Twenty bucks in five years. <laughs> Sucker, weren't you? And how? Going to be one again? No. Just stick to that. You'll be okay. You won't like washing and greasing cars under Butch Franzen. He's tough. Oh, I worked with tough guys before. I can soften him up for you. I think you could soften almost anyone up, Blondie. Including yourself? Go to work on me and see. Thanks, but Mr. Maddox keeps me pretty busy. Uh, when you have a little time to spare, look me up. Maybe I will. Thank you. 
Hey, Stacy. Yeah, here I am, Butch. I'm driving the boss into town. While I'm gone, wash and polish the station wagon. And I mean wash and polish. Okay. The blue convertible needs a clean-up job, too. I'll take care of it. Now get right at it. So long. So long. Hi, Butch. Oh, hello, Eagles. The Maddox is ready for his car. All right, I'm taking it to him right now. Hi, Stacy. Oh, hi, Eccles. Don't see much of you back here in the garage. Yeah, I always get plenty to do at the house. How do you like things here, Stacy? Well. Yeah, what you like best is the uh, boss's secretary, ain't it? What do you mean? You and Shirley Reed have been seeing quite a bit of each other. Any rule here says we shouldn't? No, no, there ain't no rule, but uh, you can't afford a babe like Shirley and what you're making here. So what? So three other guys who fell for her went out and pulled jobs that landed them on morgue slabs. This is a friendly tip, chum. Watch your step. Thanks. Hey, Stacy, uh, when you was at Stillwater, did you meet up with a guy named Ross Taylor? What? No. Well, it's a big pan. I guess there were a lot of guys there you didn't meet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Shirley told you about Ben Holden? Guy we had here who pulled that uh, payroll stick up? Oh, everybody's here. Everybody's told me about him except Mr. Maddox. You know, uh, Shirley had a little hard luck the day Holden pulled that job and then got accidentally killed. She drove home with a dented front fender. A dented front fender? Yeah, she'd run into something with that sporty roadster of hers. A post, she said. Butch fixed the fender for her so it looks like new again. Well, I, uh, got to be getting back to the house. I got a lot of work to do this afternoon. So long. It's so long. Oh, Stacy, it's funny you didn't meet up with Ross Taylor out at Stillwater. He's the prison doctor. So long again. Hmm. <laughs> Casey, you think the butler, Eggles, is wise to him? Huh? He practically told me he is, Logan. But at the same time, he tipped me off about the dented fender. I got outside of this pay station as soon as I could to pass you on the word. You figure Eggles is playing on our side? He's playing Maddox's side. Eggles obviously believes that Shirley Reed's car was a hit and run that killed Holden. And that she's the works behind those three stick-ups. I think Holden and those other guys, those other two guys fell for this babe so hard that they were willing to do anything she suggested. You think that guy, Butch Franzen's in the deal with her? Well, there's an understanding of some sort between her and Butch, Logan. And he fixed that dented fender, don't forget. Ah. Well, play the two of them along, pal, but watch your step. Yeah, I'm doing that little thing every minute. And when or if you've got a suggestion from her about a stick-up, get in touch with me right away. We'll throw a little surprise party. Yeah. Oh, i got to get back to the garage now. Polish a couple of cars. <laughs> that I'd love to see. <laughs> I'll bet you would, you I remember you asked for this job, and it can't be too tough. It's never hard to play romantic with a glamorous blonde, even though you think she's loaded with trouble. Uh, uh, Logan, look, look have, you, have you told Annie Williams about everything? I've had two. You know how interested she is in what you're doing. She's especially interested in the blonde angle, pal. Uh, play that blonde angle down, will you, pal? Way down. <laughs> Morning, Stacy. Well, Shirley, that is an unexpected pleasure. I hope to see you before evening. You wouldn't have if Mr. Maddox hadn't phoned from town a little while ago. He wants you to do an errand for him. Okay. You're to go to this address and pick up a package of jewelry he's ordered for his niece. Is, uh, what does he want me to pick up jewelry for? <laughs> well, it's it's his way of showing his trust in you. I see. I'm driving into town, Stacy. I'll take you to the place if you like. I never miss a chance of being with you. I. <laughs> This trip will be strictly for business purposes, big boy. Oh, just like that, huh? Definitely. <laughs> now get my car out and let's go. Well, I have to tell Butch I'm going. Oh, he already knows. He was in the house when I got Mr. Maddox's message. Uh, well, then I'll pull out the car. That's a snappy little bus, this sport roadster of yours. It's getting pretty old. It's a 39. Mm. Looks like it just came out of the factory. Guess you never had any accidents with it. Oh, I've dented a couple of fenders, that's all. Recently? No, not for over a year. Now you're lucky. Now get in. You want to drive or shall I? I will. I like to drive men. <laughs> Ah, 
I'll park in front of the side door of the building, Stacy. Here. Yeah. Now, the man you're to see, Mr. LeBlanc, is a wholesale diamond merchant. His offices are on the second floor. I see. Mr. Maddox left this sealed envelope with Eggles before I came to work this morning and absentmindedly forgot to tell me anything about it. Here, it's addressed to Mr. LeBlanc, and I imagine it's to identify you, so you'll be given the package. Uh, just send the note in to LeBlanc, huh? Mm-hmm, right. Uh, you know, Shirley, uh, a gal like you ought to have some nice jewelry. When I get it, it's going to be bought and paid for by a man whom I'm certain isn't a crook. You mean that? What do you think? Babe, I wish I knew. <laughs> oh, come on now. Get up to Mr. LeBlanc and hurry back with that package. Yeah, okay. Second floor, remember? And hurry. Yeah, I will. Yeah. I wish I knew. You. <laughs> Mr. Blank, Mr. Maddox sent me. Uh, close the door, Stacy. I'll get the package for you. Okay. It's uh, in my safe. Just one moment while I open it. Hmm? Right. I uh, suppose you're one of Mr. Maddox's ex-convicts since he doesn't hire anyone else. Yeah. You're taking a big chance opening that safe when you're alone with an ex-con, aren't you? <laughs> I, I have a burglar alarm. Uh, here is the package. Would you want me to sign for it? Well, that's unnecessary. I have Mr. Maddox's note, which amounts to a receipt. See. Good day, Stacy. Okay, so long, Mr. LeBlanc. Hello, Stacy. Hey. Eggles. What are you doing here? I'm here to keep you out of trouble, bud. Come on down these stairs and hurry. What trouble? Shirley you... brought you here, didn't she? She's waiting for you outside. Yes. Already tipped you that she's trouble. But I don't see what... You will, very soon. Come on, pile into a car there. I'm joining you. Eggles? Yeah, I'm giving a surprise party, Shirley. Start this bus and then step on the gas. Well, why Do you... like I say. Like this gun says. <gasps> Eggles. Keep your shirt on, Stacy. You know whose side I'm on. Yes, Start but Start the car, Toots, and get moving. All right. Turn right at the next corner, then head for River Road. I'd like an explanation of this. Yeah, I can stand one, too. Listen, there's your explanation. What? It's a burglar alarm. From the building we just left. Yeah, it's in LeBlanc's place. He just set it going. Why? Because you just robbed him, Stacy. What? I... That's what he's going to say. Hand over that package he gave you, mister. I'm beginning to get this set up. I thought you would. I don't get You're what... not smart, Shirley. Give me that package, Stacy. Gun of yours doesn't give me much choice. All right, here. How much is in it? A hundred grand. In odd set diamonds, that'll be very hard to trace. But Blank collects the insurance on them, and you and he split the diamonds, too. That's the play. You had the same deal with the paymaster who accused Holden of robbing him, and with the other holdup victims. Uh huh. Holden's seen going into that paymaster's office. Then he goes out with a package he's been given for Mr. Maddox. I meet him and take him away. Nobody but me and the paymaster know that Holden's been tricked into going there on a fake errand. It's like I tricked you into giving Stacy a phony letter to LeBlanc, Shirley, that I said was from the boss who just phoned me. Oh. Holden never had a chance to explain what really happened because you made him meet with an accident, Eccles. That's right. Swell little scheme, a huh, wise guy? Well, it was until this LeBlanc job. Now you slipped up plenty. Yeah, how? Because I haven't got a record. I've never been a con. You haven't? No. The cops aren't going to believe that I robbed LeBlanc, Eccles. Hey, you're not so bright either, gumshoe. Why do you think I made you suspect Shirley here? Suspect me? He had you figured as a very bad doll, toots. So, of course, he reported the hints I dropped about you to the cops. They'll think he stuck up LeBlanc at your suggestion. You try to rub him out, then when they find both you and him dead, Shirley, they'll think you knocked each other off. After you'd managed to hide these diamonds. You've done a pretty good job of figuring, Eggles. <laughs> but you shouldn't have made me believe that this car of Shirley's had been used in connection with the holdups and murders. Yeah, what's that got to do with... The... This is a gun you feel at the back of your neck, Eggles. What's going on? You get him, I'll blow your head off. Okay, don't shoot. I got his gun, Lieutenant. Good. All right, stop the car, Shirley. I am. So, yeah. 
He had a cop hiding in a rumble seat. Eh? Yeah, that's right. He heard everything you said. Which is more than enough to burn you three times, Eggles. I thought if I was invited to go places in this car, I'd be more comfortable with a cop back there. So several good guys have been taking turns. You thought I was behind those holdups and murders. You thought I was a traitor to Mr. Maddox, who's treated me like a daughter. Well, anybody can make mistakes. No! Get out of this car. We want you to drive us and our prisoner to headquarters, miss. I'll drive you and your prisoner, Lieutenant. But this person, this Stacy, he's going to get out and walk. We'll join the crowd of the Blue Note in just a moment. You know, in the old days... A rich, steaming cup of coffee meant fuss, bother, and lots of things to be cleaned up afterward. But those days are gone. Gone, because now you can enjoy delicious coffee through the amazing invention of soluble coffee. A spoonful of this new kind of coffee in the cup, hot water, and there you are. Delicious coffee, quick as you can say, Anchor Glass. And Anchor Glass helps bring you the convenience of soluble coffee. Because two-thirds of the packers of soluble coffee protect their products against harmful moisture by using clean, sanitary anchor glass containers and anchor caps. The cap that comes off with a twist of the wrist and goes on again just as easily to protect the flavor and freshness of the coffee. Yes, today you can enjoy delicious hot coffee in a split second with flavor protected by sanitary anchor glass containers, a product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. So, you had a nice long walk, Casey, huh? Sure did. I couldn't get a cab, Ethelbert. There was a strike on the bus lines. And my feet were darn near frozen by the time I got the express over. Oh, I'm so sorry for you, Casey. Well... And not only because of your poor, tired feet. Beautiful, glamorous Shirley says she'll never speak to you again. Uh, 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 look, Annie, you know very well that my only interest in that gal well, of was... Of course. You were merely trying to solve a crime and to get an exclusive for the paper. Why, of course. But you had a nice, cozy time investigating that blonde and getting the wrong answers. Blondes. Wow. Oh, I, I don't know what there is about them. I do. Yeah, what? You silly men. <laughs> Prime Photographer, starring Stott Scottsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deeds and is based on the fictional character of Casey, created by George Harmon Cox. Original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. If you'd like to serve with America's foremost military organization and yet remain at home as a civilian, sign up as a citizen Marine with the organized Marine Corps Reserve. Inquire at your local Marine Corps recruiting office today. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.